Hello Merfolk fans, my name is Joe. Thanks very much for tuning into my channel today. I am here with a replay of a match against a cool dredge deck. Looking at the opening hands, I have one island, one Mutavault as my only lands, but I have a Chris Catcher for turn one, a Silvergill Adept for turn two, and if I draw into any lands, I can follow up with Lord after Lord after Lord. So this is uh, an easy keep for Merfolk. Looking at the opponent side of things, he himself, he has three lands. Um, Dakmore Salvage uh, comes into the battlefield tapped, but has Dredge, so that's why the deck plays it. Uh, has Bloodgast and Golgari Thug. Um, Kolagon's Command as uh, some nice removal. But looking at the lands that he has in his hand, Ancient Ziggurat uh, can only be used to cast creature spells. A little bit awkward, can't be used for Kolagon's Command. And Faithless Looting to help fuel Dredge a little bit. I, I think that this is a keep on the opponent's side too. So let's see how uh, the decisions went. Okay, we both decided to keep. I won the die roll, so I'll be on the play. I'm going to open up with Island into Curse Catcher. The opponent draws a Vengevine for the turn and uh, plays his tap land with no turn one play. Uh, for my part, I draw into a blue source. Now, seeing immediately that the opponent is on dredge, they typically don't have a lot of removal spells. They don't have a lot of interaction in general. They're just trying to do their own graveyard thing. So with plenty of Merfolk in my hand, if I want to play out Silvergill on a later turn, I'll still have uh, creatures to reveal for the Silvergill. I am going to go for the throat here and play out Lord, just trying to maximize damage. So uh, I play out the Lord and swing for two with Curse Catcher. The opponent goes down to 18. Probably wanted to hit a land there, but uh, draws a Golgari Thug, plays his uh, fast land in Copperline Gorge, and uh, chooses to go with Faithless Looting here, trying to get his dredge plan going. He draws into uh, a land, which was pretty good, and another Faithless Looting. Let's see what he chooses to discard here. Probably, I have to imagine it's going to be something like a Vengevine and maybe a Golgari Thug. So he chooses uh, Golgari Thug and Bloodgast rather than Vengevine. I guess he's not going to be able to play out two creatures anytime soon to, uh, to get Vengevine back from the graveyard. So for my turn, um, having not seen anything that will uh, dissuade me from my battle plan of just pushing damage, I'm going to go ahead and play my third land, play Regery, and swing for six. <clears throat> now this is uh, setting up for a uh, turn four kill. Hitting for six now will take the opponent down to 12. Next turn we'll be swinging for nine plus four with the Mutavault, uh, which comes up to uh, 13, actually. So it's actually one point of overkill as it stands. The opponent uh, is just checking how much damage he's taking. Uh, it goes down to 12, and let's see what card he draws for the turn. Uh, he chooses actually to uh, dredge the Golgari Thug, trying to get some stuff into the graveyard, some good stuff, maybe some uh, blood gasts or uh, grave crawlers. But instead, he hits three lands and a Jace Vrin's Prodigy, a pretty terrible dredge there. <clears throat> so uh, the opponent for his main phase. Um, remarks on how silly that uh, that last dredge was and decides to just scoop it up. I don't think he had any plays there. Uh, Kolagon's command with its two damage is, is not enough to kill any of my three toughness creatures. So that was a great uh, turn four merfolk game. If you consider the opponent's scoop to be turn three, that was actually a turn three win. So very impressive. Uh, very good game for the merfolk. So going to game two, um, being on the draw with one land, a Curse Catcher, a Silvergill, a Tidebinder. It's tempting, but I have to imagine it's a mulligan. On the opponent's side of things, he's got three lands, uh, one of them a tap land, two of them gemstone mines. Now, I uh, haven't seen gemstone, mo gemstone mine too much in modern recently, but what happens with this card is that uh, it comes in with three mining counters, and you can tap it to remove a counter and add one mana of any color. Now what happens is that at the end, when it has no more counters, it's not like it can make colorless mana or something. You have to just throw it in the graveyard. You have to sacrifice it. So this land actually leaves the battlefield after uh, the opponent has used it three times. For that reason, it's a terrible target for spreading seas because it then gives them a permanent mana source as an island instead of um, forcing it to go to the graveyard. Um, so we have to assume this is a decent keep for the opponent. He's got um, a pretty aggressive hand with two Grave Crawlers and some removal in Lightning Axe, which will allow him to sort of throw away a Grave Crawler. So let's see if I chose to keep this rather sketchy hand here or not. Well, I go down to six. Uh, I think that was a good decision. And uh, seeing three lands, a Harbinger to bounce something like a Vengevine, 
pretty solid. I have enough mana to cast my Rejury and the Spreading Seas to take him off of some of his colors. I look at the top card of my library and choose to put an island at the bottom. We already have enough lands for now, and inevitably we're going to hit at least one more land throughout the course of the game to get that fourth land for something like a Master of Waves. So my, for my turn, uh, I draw a Relic of Progenitus. Very, very happy to see that. We needed a turn one play, and can't be too many uh, better turn one plays than Relic of Progenitus against a Dredge deck. Opponent gets in for two with uh, Gravecrawler. Doesn't like seeing this Relic of Progenitus on my side of things, and uh, decides uh, to play out both Gravecrawlers. So one gemstone mine is already down to only one counter, and the other one uh, went from three down to two this turn. I draw into another Merorigery, which is pretty good. Relic of Progenitus not doing anything yet, but threatening uh, to do quite a lot against the Dredge deck. So as I mentioned, um, Spreading Sea is really terrible against Gemstone Mine because it gives them that permanent mana source. Even though it can only produce blue, uh, it's great for colorless mana if they want to cast something that requires any kind of generic mana. Lightning Axe, we can see, is just red. Abrupt Decay is black and green. So in that sense, blue mana is the same as the opponent getting rid of the land. But I think card, you know, certain cards like Golgari Grave Troll have some generic mana in their cost. Um, I think Golgari Thug, if that's the card that they play, has some generic mana in its cost. So if the opponent, if we can make the opponent uh, sacrifice some of his lands, that's going to be the best. So I just play out Harbinger of the Tides this turn, getting one of the Grave Crawlers back to his hand. Because, you know, using my mana, developing my board with a creature, and the Relic of Progenitus just threatening to keep the opponent's graveyard empty. He draws into a second Lightning Axe. A little bit awkward, because to use one of his uh, removal spells, he's going to have to either discard a removal spell, or discard a creature, which will immediately get exiled by Relic of Progenitus. So the opponent's going to get in with both of these guys. I don't want to trade uh, one of my only creatures at this point, so I'll take 4 damage going down to 14. And in the second main, uh, uh, Lightning Axe is, a, is an instant. The opponent doesn't have to cast it on my turn, on his turn, sorry, if he wants to do so. Okay, so he just passes the turn here. I draw into a Tidebinder Mage. It's a creature, so it's pretty good in that sense uh, that it can just do some damage, but it's, uh, it's not locking down any green or red stuff as it stands. So I'll swing for two with the Harbinger of the Tides. The opponent takes the two. I'm going to play my Mutavault and follow up with... Hmm, thinking about it a little bit. Because I might want to leave Mana up to crack Relic in case he decides to go crazy with the, with the, uh, the Graveyard on his end step. So at this point I'll just play out the Tidebinder Mage, just as a body, I think. It seems correct to me, because if the opponent Lightning Axe is discarding Gravecrawler and I don't have... Well, let's see, no, I could still process, I could still get rid of his Gravecrawler, so just being very conservative, leaving up mana to uh, activate Relic's second ability to exile all the cards from all graveyards. <clears throat> so on my end step, the opponent taps his second gemstone mine, going down to only one mining counter, casting Lightning Axe, and has to think a little bit about what card to discard, because he knows it's just going to get exiled forever. So he thinks about it a little bit. Ultimately decides to uh, put his grave crawler uh, in the graveyard as the discard, and I just exile it with my Relic of Progenitus. The opponent casts Lightning Axe targeting uh, Tidebinder just to keep creatures off my table. Um, seeing, the opponent's leave, seeing the opponent leaving mana up, knowing that he had grave crawler in hand, that last turn I was expecting some kind of removal. That was another reason that I didn't play my Mirror Rejury out. Uh, the opponent would have gotten much, much more value out of the Lightning Axe were I to have played my Mirror Rejury that turn. Okay, so the opponent's going to use his last uh, last counter um, for his last Lightning Axe, <clears throat> discarding Dakmore Salvage to kill my Harbinger of the Tides. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure at this point, like exactly when the opponent was doing this. So he chose to do it during his upkeep so that he could. <clears throat> Excuse me. If he wanted to, he, he can dredge this Dakmore Salvage. Uh, that's not sufficiently threatening enough for me to crack the relic in response before he gets to dredge it. So I let all of this stuff happen. The Harbinger will die. He's going to go ahead and dredge this Dakmore Salvage. 
Uh, he dredges an abrupt decay in a gemstone mine. Pretty terrible. Um, and the Dakmore salvage will go to his hand. So he plays that tapped, and with an abrupt decay in hand, he's not going to uh, be able to play that out this turn since he doesn't have the uh, necessary mana. So I choose not to activate uh, the Relic of Regenitus during my my opponent's end step with my mana available only because this is a great trump card against uh, Dredge and one of the few ways that they can actually do anything is with with tricks out of their graveyard. Things like Vengevine, things like Bloodgast. He currently doesn't have any Dredge cards in his graveyard so I'm being a little bit overly cautious I think. But I drew a Spreading Seeds for the turn. Um, these Grave Crawlers are certainly a clock, but I don't feel overly threatened by them. I know that I have a Mutavolt as a blocker. I know that I have some creatures in hand. The opponent obviously is having some uh, mana difficulty, uh, so I think I'm, the plan here is just to continue to strain his mana. Drawing cards is also uh, a pretty good thing for me. I'm going to hit his his only solid mana source. If he wants to use gemstone mine, he's going to have to sacrifice it. So drawing into a Tidebinder Mage, again suboptimal as he doesn't have any green, green or red creatures to lock down. Um, I leave one mana up now to crack Relic. Gravecrawler's attack, I take four again going down to six, starting to feel a little bit more threatening. And on my end step this time I have to imagine I'm going to cycle the Relic of Progenitus. Only because um, it's, I really want to hit my fourth land and uh, things are sort of getting to the breaking point here. The opponent doesn't have anything going on in the graveyard um, and just going to uh, get through this pretty quick. Alright, so for my part I draw into a Lord. A little bit clunky, I'm not hitting any lands here. At this point I'm just going to want to trade with these Grave Crawlers if possible. So I'm going to play out a Silver Gill um, trying to um, draw cards, trying to draw into lands specifically. So I continue not hitting lands. A little bit awkward. I didn't play the Spreading Seas that turn again because I don't want to give my opponent uh, a permanent mana source with Spreading Seas. I'd rather that he just sacrifices his Gemstone Mine. We can see that Kolagon's Command benefits from having access to blue or generic mana. The opponent hit his land. Good for him. Uh, worse for me. I'd love to hit a land myself. With access to Kolagon's command mana, uh, I think the opponent's going to go for it here. They they do have to sacrifice their gemstone mine. They're going to hit my silver gill and um, force me to discard. Now I think the opponent mistakenly thought that they had lethal here. Uh, they do not. I'm going to let this resolve. There's nothing I can do about it, but I'm thinking about which card to discard. It's not, the opponent didn't make a mistake. He could have shot the two damage at my face, but then I would have traded a Gravecrawler um, with my Silvergill, uh, taking two and going down to two either way. Um, it would have been the same exact result. I would have taken two damage from Kolagon's Command or an extra two damage from Gravecrawler. So again, the opponent thought that it was lethal, just miscalculated, passes the turn. I hit a fourth land. It's not, the, not an optimal fourth land. It, it, it can be a blocker against these Gravecrawlers. I'm really pushing it here. Um, so at this point I realize I need to play out creatures. Um, and any creature that I play out at this point is going to need to uh, block. I play out a Tidebinder here trying to um, sort of just uh, waste some time basically. Um, if the opponent attacks with both Grave Crawlers, I'm going to have to block with the Tidebinder and I guess block with the Mutavault. I may have been correct to play out the Lord and then chump, or rather trade with one grave crawler and um, actually just eat another grave crawler with a mutavault if he wants to get in with both. Um, I was thinking if I drew into another blue source, then next turn I can play out a Regiri and a Lord of Atlantis, just getting two 3-3s three onto the board immediately. So I was just expecting to throw this Tidebinder Mage away, but in retrospect I think it may have been correct to play out this Island Walk Lord, and if the opponent gets in with both grave crawlers, I can block with a mutavault and uh, eat one of his grave crawlers. So the opponent drew into Bloodgast. So we can see that keeping him off of his, his uh, black mana was a good decision. He can't play this guy out and he can't get him into the graveyard. 
Uh, very interesting here that the opponent only attacks with one grave crawler. Now he needs to control a zombie to be able to replay grave crawler. So if he were to attack with both of them and I kill both of them, he won't have he won't control any zombies, won't be able to replay them. So he's going for the recursion here. He's going to attack, I'm going to block, and then grave crawler is going to immediately come back. Which given the opponent's position, I think actually makes a lot of sense. So I lose my tide binder and the grave crawler comes back. For my turn, I draw another Island Walk Lord. So at this point, I'm pretty much forced into that play that I mentioned earlier, where I play out the Lord of Atlantis, uh, potentially making my Muta Vault into a uh, bigger, bigger blocker. Now, I got very lucky here that the opponent didn't hit a, a Black Source, because if they did, Bloodgast has haste as long as I have 10 or less life. If he plays out this Bloodgast, he could attack with three attackers, uh, three two-power attackers, and with only two blockers, he would have uh, he would have had me there. So dodged a bullet, but as it stood, the opponent plays out his third grave crawler, putting a lot of pressure on me. Uh, with no more access to Black Mana that turn, he chose not to get in with one of his grave crawlers this turn. Now it's worth noting that grave crawler can't block, Bloodgast also can't block. So the opponent, as far as my attack step goes, virtually has an empty empty board here. Now I need to keep parity with creatures. I still didn't draw into a land. Um, and I cannot afford to risk playing out a Spreading Seas here. So I'll just play my second Lord of Atlantis, my uh, Merfolk going up to 3 power, M Mutavault going up to 4. So uh, the opponent drew into a tapped Black Source. Super awkward because again, if we, if we think about it, I now had uh, 3 blockers. If the opponent had drawn an untapped Black Source, he could have played Bloodgast with haste and attacked with 4 creatures. With only 3 blockers, I would have lost. So we can see um, the variants that tapped lands introduce into um, in introduce into a deck. That would have been uh, just a straight up victory for the opponent if this had been like a, uh, a swamp, for example. Okay, I'm still not drawing, um, not drawing any land. Now I can play out a lord here, having three blockers up. If I play out a Redry, I'll have three blockers against his three grave crawlers, but I know that Bloodgast has haste. I don't know that he has Bloodgast in hand, but it has to be a consideration against this deck. So I need to have uh, either just leave out my Muta Vaults to, to have four blockers, or um, play a Harbinger and have four blockers that way. And um, since he can just easily play out grave crawlers again anyway, um, I don't really need Harbinger's bounce ability right now. So for my turn, I think a little bit about it. Um, because if I take him, the opponent off of one of the black, then he can't play Bloodgast anyway. And I could still leave Muta Vault up, having my three blockers against the three, grave, the three grave crawlers. In that case, though, the opponent could still draw a black land and play out a Bloodgast blood if he had it in hand. So ultimately, I'll play out the Harbinger uh, as nothing but a 2-2 vanilla uh, merfolk. But it's a 4-4 because of my lords, and I still have four blockers up. The opponent draws a Faithless Looting. Is going to choose to uh, do that. I mean, the dredge decks really want uh, graveyard synergies. So he drew into a Golgari Thug and another Abrupt Decay. I think he's probably going to discard these two creatures, since they both have graveyard synergies. And he does, leaving the two Abrupt Decays in his hand. However, without access to green mana, these Abrupt Decays are pretty terrible. So for my turn, I hit a Curse Catcher, which is going to be pretty cool, because I'm going to get going to be able to get in for um, damage with the Harbinger, with the Island Walk, and then play a Curse Catcher and get a Mero Regery uh, trigger to untap Harbinger and leave him back as a blocker. Um, so I'm going to start off by playing the Mero Regery. And then actually rushed a little bit uh, playing the Curse Catcher, but sort of immediately caught myself. Like even if I take uh, like more than three or four seconds and let the opponent actually think about it, I don't take things back. But if I just flash something onto the stack, I, I let myself back up a little bit. So I'll get in with Harbinger for five damage with Island Walk. And then uh, in my second main phase, I'll play the Curse Catcher, untap the Harbinger, having a really strong wall of merfolk as blockers. Now even if the opponent draws into some green mana, he's not going to be able to um, have profitable attacks even with Abrupt Decay. If, if he plays a land, uh, Bloodgast will come back from the graveyard, he'll have haste. Um, he can uh, kill one of my creatures, but then I'm still going to have an enormous wall of blockers against his attackers. 
So for his dredge this time, if we look at it, he's dredging Golgari Thug. Uh, he hits a Bloodgast, which is pretty good. Um, but he's not going to have land draw. He's not going to have landfall this turn, so the Bloodgast is not as good as it needs to be. Otherwise, hitting uh, not really amazing cards here. You don't really need any of these in the graveyard. Now, um, Lotleth Troll helps explain why I bring in Tidebinder Mages. Uh, Lotleth Troll is one of the biggest threats in these dredge decks because he is he does so many things. Let's see if I can get over here to discuss the Lotleth Troll. Uh, he has Trample first of all. He might not look like much as a 2-1, but he is a discard outlet, which is huge for these stretch decks. If you have multiple Venge Vines in hand, you can just throw the, or multiple Blood Ghasts, all of these things. You can discard them to the Lotless Troll. You want them in the graveyard anyway, so it's just a straight-up synergy. Um, you, if, so you discard them, you'll play a land, all of your Blood Ghasts come onto the battlefield with Landfall, and if you play a couple of small creatures, then all of your Venge Vines come onto the battlefield. Uh, he has an amazing ability, which is for a single black he can regenerate. So you're you're synergizing, discarding Bloodgast, Venge Vines, Grave Crawlers into the graveyard, putting a lot of plus one counters, making this guy into a 5-4, 6-5, 7-6, 7-6 Trampler, who can regenerate with a single black mana. Extremely threatening card, and uh, Tidebinder Mage is just uh, one of our few really good answers to that guy. So um, pretty poor dredge on the opponent's side of things. And he takes the Golgari Thug up into his hand, uh, realizing that he needs some kind of blockers, I guess. Um, it's easy to lose track of the fact that Gravecrawler can't block. I think the opponent may have done that in this situation. Uh, plays out the Golgari Thug, but I think ultimately he's just going to remember that uh, the Gravecrawler can't block. So um, just realizing that with, with that he only has one blocker, I think I'm just going to activate the two Muta Vaults here and push a crazy amount of damage. Okay, I think I actually sort my creatures and label the, label their power and toughness here, just to uh, just to make it clear to the opponent that there's too much coming across. So uh, if we look at it, he can block one of the five fives, and even if he had abrupt decay up uh, for two of my creatures, uh, he block a five five or kill two of my lords. I don't know if he killed two of my lords, that'd be pretty good. I don't know if it'd be lethal then. I don't really need to calculate it because we see that he can't cast any of these spells. Uh, block a five five, and then he would proceed to take twenty six damage. So. Um, so that was a really interesting game, I think. The opponent had a really explosive opening uh, with his multiple grave crawlers. I went all the way down to two life and sat there for something like four, five, or six turns. Uh, missed land drops for a few turns. Uh, chumped a grave crawler, which is a little bit embarrassing, but ultimately was able to stabilize. Uh, spreading seas, I think I did a good job with it in, uh, in that game. Not wasting it on gemstone mines. That's something somebody could easily do, seeing that this can produce any mana. You'll throw a spreading seas onto it. But you have to remember that these things are really ticking clocks. The opponent can only use it three times. Gemstone mine is only really effective in the most explosive of combo decks, I think, uh, because they know that they're not going to go to turns 9, 10, 11, 12. They, if they lose, sorry, if they, if they haven't won by turns 4, 5, 6, then, you know, uh, they're probably going to lose. And Gemstone Mine is probably just, you know, acting as um, just a land that can produce any color of mana, sort of a reflecting pool or something like that. So anyhow, uh, a quick match. Uh, the first game was a turn three or four win. And um, the second, one, second game was a little bit more grindy, but certainly much more interesting, I think. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please subscribe. Uh, leave some comments if you have anything to say about the match. Please let me know if I made any ridiculous misplays. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much. I'll see you later.